Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be in the shop building some things. Oh, one thing. Uh, so my dad recently acquired this cat skid steer for the property. It's got the brush forks on it right now. But uh, we need to move some trailers and we don't have a trailer attachment for it yet. But we do have forks, or a hitch attachment I should say. Do have forks. Uh, we've got two sets because one came with the machine and we already had one. So we're going to stick with the old ones because they're a bit longer and beefier. So basically want to build a hitch attachment that you can slide onto the forks um, and has got a receiver on top, slide whatever hitch in, and you can move trailers around. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, I went and picked up some metal. It's going to be pretty simple. Um, so we'll slap that together and maybe go test it out. Okay, so here's the metal, that's five by two. The forks are three and seven eighths wide, so four inch won't work unfortunately, but five inch will work. It'll make it a little bit easier to get the forks in anyways. Uh, two inch square, eighth wall, um, that'll be the cross pieces. And I've got the old hitch from my Jeep still sitting out back and that's why we keep random things from old vehicles and scraps off old parts for scrap metal because you never know when you're going to use it and it's usually more often than not so it is out here in scrap steel shelf as you can see most of this stuff actually there's some new stock down there but a lot of this stuff is just things that used to be something else. So there's an old hitch off like a Tercel, but it's a the small, whatever it is, inch and a quarter. Uh, somewhere, oh, there's, right there is my Jeep hitch. So this guy, actually, no, this isn't stock. This is off my aftermarket bumper and uh, was using it for recoveries obviously some real good yanks which tore a couple of the welds so i've since upgraded that but cut this one off and kept it around because well i'm using it right now so perfect all right so i think first of all i'm going to get this hitch cleaned up probably use the plasma cutter and just completely take this off because i'm going to be welding onto the bottom so i'll kind of cut these spots back and it'll work good as a gusset for the the main bit so it doesn't twist but get rid of all that clean it up and then i'll move on to cutting up well only one cut for the cross member and it should be pretty simple that's what everyone says before things aren't simple first of all I'll put on the old apron that it's a well a store-bought apron but we actually bought two because usually they're not very long and i want to cover my feet when i'm welding and the slag from cutting and everything. So my mom actually uh, sewed two of them together so they're long, go over my feet, and I don't get burned because if burning hot metal drops into my lap or on my feet, I can't feel it and I get burned very badly, which I have already done once and it wasn't fun. So try and prevent that. Something's moving. Maybe I'll actually get a hammer. All right. Well, not the prettiest, but I'll probably clean that up. 
See if I can get that off of there and finish those. This will be good. So, it's not the prettiest, but it's farm stuff. And farm stuff is never pretty. It just needs to work and that's it. Okay, that's good enough. Like I said, it's farm good. So those are gonna act as gussets now. Uh, may have cut a little bit deep there, but also might not have been me. Can't prove that. I guess now would be a good time to kind of show you what I'm thinking. Five by two, eighth wall. Um, this is where the forks are gonna go into. And then this piece um, is gonna, there's gonna be, well, I'm gonna cut this in half. One bar there, one bar there, picture that. And then the receiver is gonna weld onto the top of those. We were gonna do just a ball on here, but since we've got some stuff two inch, some stuff two and seven sixteenths, then uh, we decided to go with this because you can slide any receiver in, pintle, whatever. So that's what we're going with. So next step is gonna be cutting this in half, which I think I said this was two inch square, eighth wall, it's actually three sixteenths. This five by two is eighth wall, so we wanted a bit beefier for the cross pieces since it'll be supporting a lot of the weight and then just more meat to weld the receiver into to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. These cold cut saws are awesome, but obnoxiously loud. Sorry about the ears. So that should be the only cut that I have to do. How did I do? It's within 500 thou, so that's good enough for me. Next step is going to be just uh, measuring back, making sure everything is equal and square, making some marks and uh, clean up the metal a little bit and I'll weld it on. So I'll save you the 10 minutes of squaring it up and measuring because that's not very fun. And uh, I'll meet you back with the welder. put this on I'm gonna finish weld all this stuff and then move to that. Okay and since people always want to see the weld oops, there you go I'm uh, self-taught slash grandpa slash dad taught. Um, usually they were doing stick welding around the farm. Um, I've obviously got the MIG and just learned as I go and seems to work so far. So finish up this side, move on to the top. That's the crossbar finished. Now I can move on to the receiver. A little wonky. It's farm good. Whew. Well, I'm not cold, that's for sure. There she is. That's the gist of it. Um, pretty straightforward. 
I am going to weld a safety chain, or it's not even safety because we'll be using it all the time, but a chain that holds this back to the main frame of the forks because without it, it could just slide off. I'm happy with this. Uh, I'll get the safety chain while well, we'll go out, measure the length that I want that, get the safety chain welded on, and then we'll have to weld a piece onto the forks themselves. And then we'll go test it out, probably. All right, my dad just showed up, so he's going to hop on the tractor, grab the forks, bring them inside so we can get it completed inside the shop. Oh, for those of you wondering, these are my temporary controls that I use in Marge. So the handle side is the brake and then your thumb pushes that one on the gas. Here he comes. Pretty perfectly balanced. Alright, got the forks hung up, so now the plan is, well I found this old, uh, I think it's off a boat, the bow safety chain for on a trailer, so we'll use that, weld an end to it to the back of this, and then weld this, which is I think a link off our old tractor chains, onto the middle of the forks to be able to hook that to and keep this from sliding off the front of the forks. Done. Now I'll measure up how long we need the chain. Now, We'll go weld this to the attachment. Securement done. And now we go and test fit them and make sure everything is as it should be. Oh, not light anymore. Okay. Gotta move the forks together a little bit. Usually, a guy would just kick these, but I don't feel like it today, so I'm doing it by hand. So easy. Okay. Something like that. Then oh. see if I can do this. Step is um, I'll probably hop in the skid steer. Hop being the not the term to use, but I will eventually get myself into the skid steer and we'll go try these puppies out, moving a couple trailers, moving a van, and see how they work. There's the finished product. Obviously, the ball will slide in there and it will go up instead of down so that it doesn't get between the forks. Safety chain hooks on there. 
Yeah, should work good. <sighs> well, it happened again. Uh, camera tipped over and must have nudged the microphone or something because there is no audio and this next chunk had a lot of speaking. So I'm gonna do my best to uh, voice over and try and uh, recuperate some of the lost footage. So bear with me. All right, so my dad is up top uh, doing some logging, cutting down some trees. So I just spray painted this with some top of the line paint. It's now black, as you can see. Spin the camera around. Uh, I'm gonna load into the skid steer using my van. Uh, eventually, I want to make a different way of loading into the skid steer out back using like a gantry crane or a trolley crane. Um, that's gonna go out back. If you want to watch me build that project, then let me know in the comments. But for now, we'll go outside and I'll show you how I do the van load-in experience. Well, there's the old van, which uh, I bought this van for filming. We did a trip down to Mexico. A friend of mine hand cycled the Baja down in Mexico. So I got this to follow him. It's a four by four, it's for sale. So if you wanna buy it, you can do that. But for now, let's have a look at how I get into the van and also look at the dirt on my face. All right. <clears throat> There we go, I'll slide this open. So uh, I made this lift, it used to be in my motorhome. Um, it's made out of aluminum, some channel aluminum. Slid her down here. So this is just wide enough for my rear and front tires to go in. This piece here uh, goes up and contacts a magnet up there so that I can push the ramp up and release it from both inside and outside. I'll let her down here, Ugh. clank. So another big thing is I didn't want to mark up the van permanently or drill any holes in the floor. So I was able to repurpose the seat mounts and bolt down to those like you see right there. Uh, no, 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 I think I'm saying, oh, look at over there. Uh, this edge piece I replaced uh, with some steel, so I took the edging that was on it off and I can put it back on after. Uh, there's the winch, and I'm noticing now that the controller and the hooks are out of my reach, which are usually laying out on the floor where I can reach them, so I'm gonna have to go get my grabber stick. Alright, let's grab my grabber stick. Okay, where is it? There it is. Look at that beauty. So the pointy part is for grabbing high things. The hook is for grabbing low things. And uh, it's connected in a way that you probably wouldn't even understand. So I'm not even going to explain it. All right. Let's see. This is almost at the limits of my grabber stick rating. <laughs> Got it. Oh look, it's managed to hook itself on everything possible. What a surprise. I love a challenge. There we go. Got the remote. Now I just need to hook the hooks. Oh, it's stuck on more bolts. This comes as a great surprise. Everything always goes so smoothly for me. There we go. Got the remote. Probably swearing here a little bit, so I'll add in some Oh, look, I'm doing a wheelie. Check me out. Okay, so I grab these hooks. They're uh, carabiners of sorts. Probably the cheapest ones I could find. Hook them onto my frame. Push the button. Oh, undo my brakes first. My face is still dirty. Push the button. Rrr, winch noises, winch noises, winch noises. Probably speed this up a little bit. Fast winch noises. And he's in. Record time. Do a little pirouette. Got this rope here, little arm strong, pull that puppy up, it's not that heavy. Now I'm inside and the camera's over there, so I'm gonna 
Go grab it. Door slam. Hey, there you are, you dirty pirates. Let's go up top. We're driving up top. There's a lot of trees that my dad is cutting down. They're burning stuff. A lot of pine beetle and whatnot. So that's the reason we got the skid steer is to help with all that cleanup. There's a tree. There's another tree. Another tree. Here I am again. Here's a can of brake clean. Shut up, you stupid noisy ramp. Anyways, here's a can of brake clean. Let's go see if we can find a fire. There's a fire. So let's uh, put it in park. Brake clean. Oh no, I'm gonna be a bad shot. And then I have to exit the area quickly. Dang it. Hmm. All right, I got a pitchfork. Let's go sling it on, see if I can pull away fast enough. Oh boy. A few moments later. really perched up there on that branch. It's gonna be explosion by heat, I think. Five minutes later. Six and a half hours later. Thought this would be a lot quicker. 2,000 years later. <laughs> Huh. Well, that was very anticlimactic. Oh yeah, well, who'd have thought? Anyways, back down to the shop for uh, some skid steer action. Thousands of tears later. All right, so he's got the skid steer pulled out, door open, he'll put the bucket over the roof, and then we'll position it so that the ramp folds down onto the step of the skid steer and it'll then be a bridge. That's how it stays up there with the magnet like I was talking about earlier. So that's how it's done for now. Um, I used to have an old lift on my old one, so it was actually easier because I could put the lift down and pull up to a machine and it would just be a platform to me. For me to go on, I could leave my chair on it and so I could transfer back out into it. This, you still need two people, but it works. And like I said, I've got a plan for a longer term thing, but for now, good to go. I like the cat because the left joystick is all drive controls, the right is all bucket, so it's perfect for me. The only thing foot is optional throttle, but you have throttle control up here, so it's good to go. Let's go hook on the forks and see if this thing works. I'm filming with my bucket control hand, so it might not be the best. Got 
got the forks. I'll hit the button to lock the bob tacks, which is nice. Out we go. The backup camera. Okay, hook the hitch dealio on. Freshly painted, look at that. Bingo. You can see it nicely out the window, that's perfect. Once the hitch is in, it'll be even better. Sweet. Off we go to move some trailers in a van. Here's the first trailer, there's the second one back there. Oh good, it's got a lock on it. I wonder if it's locked up or down. Eh, we'll find out. Either way, it's getting moved. Pretty good. Um, I was kind of envisioning there being more space between the ball and the forks once you put the lift hitch on, but I might lengthen that safety chain a bit just to get it closer to the end of the forks so that the ends of the forks don't run into like the jack leg, especially on the box trailer. You probably saw it, it was pretty close. Um, and if you put it out to the end, then you wouldn't have that problem, but that's a very easy fix. Um, while I was doing that, I got a call for an off-road recovery, so I told him I'll be another 15 minutes and then hop in my Jeep, and we'll go do that. He's on the west side of Kelowna, so it'll be about an hour to get to him. He's up just on a main road, so shouldn't be too bad. I'm gonna go by myself, so let's go do that. Going to go hop in my Jeep, and we'll go get them out. Sounds like it's a pickup or something, I'm assuming it's a truck, but stuck sideways trying to turn around, the usual. So let's go do that. I'm by myself again today because it's now Denny's turn to be in Mexico. So uh, no one with me, but I don't think I'm going to hop out and get it myself. I'm going to probably ask the customer to do it because I'm just feeling a little lazy today. So uh, it's currently 4.51 p.m., 12 degrees Celsius, which is approximately 53.6 degrees of the Fahrenheit. And uh, it's going to be good. Should be no problem. Wait a second, I'm not supposed to say it's gonna be no problem or it's gonna be easy. I'm supposed to be more dramatic because I downplay everything and I'm the least dramatic person in the world, but we'll give it a shot today. So 
I, I might freeze to death if I break down. That's one thing. Uh, I'm terrified right now. I'm probably not going to get them out. It might explode. We'll see. Beauty day at least. The lake's just laking down there. The blue sky's bluing. And this is our turn. Turning on to the Forest Service Road. Real nice with the time change. With it being lighter later than five o'clock. If you haven't seen my other videos, there's a big forest fire that went through here last year, last summer, so it is all burnt. Big difference to what it used to look like, but that's just the nature of the beast these days. We have forest fire season now. So anyways, I'm going to uh, haul some booty and make some time because apparently they're right in the middle of the main road. So. If anyone else is trying to get around them, then, well, they can't, or I'll be pulling someone else out. So let's go. Apparently they're grading some roads for logging, so almost got a smooth road, just missed it by a couple hours, but tomorrow the road will be real nice. Just past 2,500 feet which I'm not sure what that is in meters. And yes, I know it's messed up that I speak in Celsius and feet, but that's my generation because we, well, we were taught in metric, but ooh, big bump. Um, our parents were taught in Imperial. So yeah, know a little bit of everything. But anyways, what was I talking about? 2,500 feet, uh, first sign of snow. So, so far so good, or no. Not so far so good. It's been extreme so far. This road is literally like one car width wide and there is, I mean, basically a cliff there or over there that if I drove off, it would be game over. So this is getting extreme. So the road is not plowed anymore. Not that it's much of a difference so far, but presumably gets worse and that's how they're stuck. So apparently he was, um, wow, that's a lot of potholes. Bottle. That's why you go fast so that they're not so bad. 3,000 feet, by the way. Anyways, apparently he was trying to get turned around and come back down and, um, Gave it a lot of gusto, he said, to get turned around. So apparently he's planted pretty good, spun down to gravel. And that is all I know. Come on, deer. There wasn't even a deer crossing sign there. They just don't pay attention to the rules, do they? Nice and ruddy, just trying to stay out of them. Oh, might almost be time for four wheel drive. Or driving with two hands. So that's how I drive when I film. A lot of thumbing. Woo! 3,600 feet now plus three degrees which is probably like 38 Fahrenheit um, turned to all snow now so that's cool it's a lot less dirty I think I also might have forgotten my charger cord for my winch remote which is awfully unprofessional of me but I was on vacation and you know, got in the vacation mode. God, I hate ruts. Just a freaking roller coaster. Oh, like, yes, I can slow down, but I don't want to. But you don't even need to hold the wheel. They just go in the ruts. All right. Well, we're at the lake. And he said he was on the main. So I have a feeling that he told me 
not the right road. So go back down and there's another road called Esperon that will go up. Try that. Oh, it's a lot of rats for nothing. Anyways, here's the here's Bear Lake or Lamley, as some call it. Back we go. Ah, good. It has started raining. All right, made it back to Esperon for a service road. This one is a little snowier and icier, so hopefully we find them on this one. Well. I do see some tire tracks here and there's been a couple other stuck marks on the road from people so it's also starting to snow now which I guess is oh, better than rain I was about to say. There he is. Well this is going to be insane. One of the hardest recoveries I've ever done in my life. How's it going? Can't park there. Pardon? You can't park there. <laughs> really? Hey, look, I see the lines. You don't see they're under the snow. How's it going, Bruce? Jesse. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, man. It's sick. Yeah, so we came up here and I was like, oh sh I got went into my tailgate and I was like, I don't have my traction. I'm, like <laughs> I came up here for school and I left my traction boards at home. Oh yeah. And we tried digging out and like I like tried it's... home last time after I called you. I was like, that's the best we could do. Well you're flexed out a little too, so yeah. cool. We'll yeah. get you pulled out. So but, like uh, they're here to help us. So what can we do to make us get out of here? Do you have I've got tow hooks on like the That was my question. Yeah. Sick. Okay, so I'll spin around. I got a kinetic rope Lovely. we'll uh, throw on the front and Lovely. it'll be a very hard pull. Lovely, yeah. I figured it was just, I was like, I, as long as he has a, like some sort of rope to get yep. us out, we'll be alright. <laughs> Sick, Lovely. okay, I'll awesome. spin around. It, also through this here first. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we got stuck right up there. Yeah. And we were like, um, we should probably turn around. <laughs> and then we turned around and then got stuck again. Just on the, on the back here? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, 90% of the people we pull out are people that look exactly like this. Yeah. Uh, I'll get you another, another soft shackle here. Oh yeah. Long dog. Lovely, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Did you say you were going for a cold plunge? Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Don't go for the ride. Yeah. Watch, take pictures. <laughs> well, you almost made it. Well, if, no, I looked, in, I looked on my GPS and I was like, I'm really close. If you would have gone, like, continued on the main road, you would have made it to the other lake, but yeah. too little, too late. Maybe another day. Yep. We're not. Maybe when it's dry. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're not too far off this year. Yeah. Usually, most years, you would not have made it this far. It would be like four feet of snow here, so. Yeah, I, like I got to the point and I was like, you know what, it's starting to get a little sticky. Yeah. It's like, let's just turn around. And then I turned, I like pulled in there to turn around and then I went to like, I was like, yeah, this thing's not moving. We finally got it free and I was in reverse. I'm like, okay, J turn, J turn. Yeah. Cut, and I'm oh, almost. <laughs> almost so just uh, hard that way and then just don't spin your tires. Super slow. Yeah. All right. Couple of good dudes. Just trying to go um for a cold plunge in the lake which that sounds like a bad idea they got me hooked up a little more that's good well, basically just idled, so uh, that was not life and death, as I thought it might be. But there was a couple moments I thought I was going to die there, so we got out lucky. He's undoing it, learned about soft shackles and kinetic ropes today, so another win. They're on their way. I won't take off quite yet. I'll just uh, make sure they're down to dirt. And then I'll probably get a little ahead because I tend to drive a little zestier than most. But yeah, good dudes. Just uh, new to town. He's here for trade school. Wanted to get out and find some lakes. So I'd rather people do that, go outside, get stuck, 
adventure, do things, than just sit at home on the couch. So, kudos. And it is quite a nice day. 549, four degrees, down we go. And just like that, we're back to gravel. There's still a little bit up the road, but uh, I can see headlights and the road's pretty good, so they'll be good from here. Oh dear. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Bruce, that recovery was insane and you almost died. And you'd be right. Um, I don't know if the camera did justice, but when I was pulling him out, we almost simultaneously flipped. Uh, I was full throttle for a long time, he was too. It was just wild, so I can't promise every recovery is gonna be like that, but um, definitely got the heart pumping. So hopefully the next one's a little less extreme, uh, a bit more tame, but uh, for now, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10 billion subscribers by the end of the year, so if you subscribe and like and comment, it really does help. And if you didn't enjoy the video, then um, subscribe and like and all that stuff anyways. Bye. Uh, excuse me, this is for Bighorn Sheep Crossing, not deer. Ah. <sighs>